How are you fighting life's battles? Welcome to Pastor's Point, I'm Jamie Schmitz. Today's program addresses this question as Pastor Timothy Clark from Harvest Christian Center in Toledo, Ohio, shares his message entitled, God's Quality. Today we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 through 17. It says, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle you will be standing firm. Stand your ground putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Today, I want to focus on the topic, God's quality. There was a magazine that started in 1931 called Gentleman's Quarterly. This magazine was originally designed to give advice to wholesalers so they could give consumers advice as to how to dress, specifically men. It later became known as Esquire Magazine. Then by 1967, it had rebranded itself and it was now or is now called GQ Magazine. This magazine is the magazine for men to go to if they want to look fashionable, if they want to look good. I mean, this magazine shows you how to coordinate your pants and your socks and your shoes and belt. I mean, it shows you how to put on the right tie with the right suit, and it shows you how to wear the right handkerchief. I mean, this is the magazine that you go to to learn how to dress for every season. But not only how to dress for every season, but this magazine shows you how to dress for every occasion in every season. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 17, there, there's a GQ magazine inserted in that particular chapter. In this letter to the people at Ephesus, Paul has inserted a GQ magazine. It's not a magazine that is designed to make you necessarily fashionable, but it is designed to make you look good in a fight. It's designed especially to make you look good even when you're in a struggle. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but maybe you're in a struggle right now and God says through Paul that this is your opportunity to look good through a struggle. See, it's one thing to be in a fight, but when you're in a fight, you don't always come out looking good. Paul says, if you apply these principles in verses 13 through 17, I'm going to make sure that you look good in the fight, during the fight, and even after the fight. So God says, or Paul says, I want you to wear God's quality. In these four verses, Paul shows us how to wear God's quality. In verses 10 through 12, he had just showed us not how to dress, but how to fight. He gives us four principles in these verses. He says, in a spiritual fight, in a fight in which you cannot see the enemy, there are four things you must do. The first thing he says, you want to assume a be strong attitude. You want to have a strong attitude before the fight. You want to have a strong attitude in the middle of the fight. And you want to have a strong attitude after the fight. Paul says in a spiritual fight, you need to assume a be strong attitude. But also in a spiritual fight, Paul says the second thing we're to do is we are to depend on God. See, depending on God releases the strength that we need for the fight. When you depend on God, it gives you that strength that you need. Right now, somebody needs extra strength. And the Bible says, depend on God. The third thing that Paul says in a spiritual fight that we're to do, we are to stand still. Standing still releases what you don't see. See, in a spiritual fight, what makes it significant 
compared to a physical fight is that in a spiritual fight, you can't see who you're fighting. In a physical fight, you can throw a right hook or you can throw an uppercut. But the reality is in a fight where you cannot see the enemy, this is called a spiritual fight. It's one thing to sleep with the enemy uh, that you can't, that you can see, but it's another thing to sleep with an enemy that you can't see. And Paul says, here is how you win this battle. He says, you have to stand still and it's standing still that releases what you don't see. If you want to know who your enemy is, then God says, stand still. So many times we're so busy in life. We're going through our busy schedules, going through our busy day, and we don't see the enemy. But also, God says, stand still and see his rescue. God is talking to you today. He's saying, stand still. You're too busy. Slow down and see God. Stand still. Be still and know that he's God. And then the fourth thing he tells us to do in a fight He says that you have to see your way out. You have to see your way out before you can make your way out. If you're in a struggle right now and you're looking at the struggle, you're looking at your circumstances, God says don't look at your struggle, but you've got to see your victory, not your defeat. And so here Paul lets us know that we're equipped to win this fight. And in verse 13, he shows us what to wear in a fight. Now that you know how to fight, he says you've got to wear the right stuff. What you wear in a fight really makes a difference. A baseball player wears a certain uniform when he plays or she plays the game of baseball. Now, if you are an ex-athlete or if you understand anything about competition or competitive games, we don't call it just a game, but we call it doing battle. And in a battle of basketball, you have to wear a certain uniform and some people wear certain pads. When you play soccer, you wear a certain uniform along with maybe a knee pad and elbow pads. And if you're a football player, not only do you wear a certain uniform, but you wear certain pads. You wear shoulder pads, you wear hip pads and thigh pads and knee pads and all kinds of the helmet. You wear all these things in a game or in a battle. Now, this is just a game, but how much more as believers do we have to wear the right stuff in a battle? And many of us, we wear the wrong stuff when we show up to the fight. As a result, we don't have great results coming through the fight. Now, obviously, God has grace and we come out. But God says, when you wear the right stuff, I limit the number of casualties that you are having in this fight. In verse 13 in our text for today, he says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. In a battle, it is imperative that you put on every piece of God's armor. See, the armor here makes up the totality of God's quality. Paul is saying that you have to have the right quality in this fight. He's not so much focused on the armor. He's only because right now he's in prison. He's in the prison epistles and he has a guard chained to him. And outside of his cell is an armored guard. And as he looks at this soldier, as he looks at this Roman soldier, he begins to spiritualize what we need for a spiritual battle. And he says, in this battle, you've got to be dressed for the battle. You've got to be dressed for life. Paul is basically saying, if you're taking notes or or trying to formulate what I'm saying, he's saying that the key to resisting the enemy is God's quality. The key to resisting the enemy is God's quality. Now, there are six pieces that make up God's quality. If you're in a battle today, God wants you to understand that it has nothing to do with your level of faith. See, many times as Christians, when we go to a battle, we fight with our faith alone. Now, we are saved by faith alone. But when it comes to a battle in which you cannot see the enemy, he says you're going to need all six pieces of God's armor. 
See, many of us, we walk out defeated. We say, well, Pastor Tim, I exercised my faith. I did everything I could. What happened? And the reality is Paul shows us that you have to wear the totality of God's quality to defeat an enemy that you cannot see. See, it takes everything. Faith is only one weapon as we look at this passage. Now, in this passage, in Ephesians 6, 13, it's coupled with 2 Corinthians 10, 4, where it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That just basically means in the original that the weapons of our warfare are not of a carnal quality. See, we've been focusing on quantity and not quality. But he says they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Now, the weapons that he's talking about are the six pieces of God's armor that he mentions in Ephesians 6, 13 through 17. He says the reason you have these weapons is for the pulling down of strongholds. Now, a stronghold, you know the picture here. You've heard this passage preached several times. The picture is of a fortress, and the symbolism is that a fortress is a place that nothing can get in and nothing can get out. Well, a stronghold is something in your life right now that you're believing God for, and no matter what you're doing, nothing is moving. I was studying this passage a few weeks ago, and I found this contextual definition of what a stronghold is, and it really blessed me. It said that a stronghold is people's standard way of thinking. In the original, it means people's standard way of thinking. And what happened, because we have a standard way of thinking, we think that it's over. Because we have a standard way of thinking, we think that there's no way we're going to come through this situation. But Paul says you have to break your standard way of thinking. And it lets you know that when you have a standard way of thinking, it keeps you from understanding that you've already won. You've already received the victory in your situation. God has already given you encouragement. So you have to stand on his word and understand that our standard way of thinking has to shift to God's way of thinking. Now, in verse 10, back over in Ephesians, Paul talks about how that we are to be strong. He basically says you are to receive strength. Now that we have received strength, we're now ready to fight the battle, but we're also now ready to put on every piece of God's armor. Now, when you see the context or the concept of putting on, you can really substitute the words access and use. He's saying access and use the six pieces that represent the totality of God's quality. What are those six pieces? Truth, righteousness, peace, salvation, the word of God, uh, and salvation, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, word of God. This is what Paul is talking about in this text. You know, we get caught up on the armor, but the reality is he says, you've got to access and use all of my weapons to defeat an enemy that you cannot see. Next, Paul says, I'm going to guarantee your victory. He says, if you, if you basically access and use these six pieces of God's armor on a consistent basis, you'll be standing still at the end of the battle. Now, this does not mean that in a battle that we don't lose some wars. It does not mean that we don't fall down. But the reality is, Paul says right now, if you are down, if, if you have given up, he's asking you to stand up. Because he's reminding you of the position that you're to be in as a believer who's truly accessing and using these six pieces of God's armor. Remember prior to this in the verse, when you look at it, Paul had said, you are to stand still. He's saying, I want you to stand still before the battle. I want you to be standing in the battle and I want you to be standing after the battle. So the reality is, if I'm accessing and using these six pieces, the same position 
that I started out with before the battle is the same position that I end the battle with. Maybe that's encouragement to you. It encourages me that God says, no matter where I am right now, even if I am down, before this battle is over, I will still be standing. Maybe you're listening right now and you're giving up and it looks like you're not going to win. Paul says, get in a winning position, stand up and stand still. Then once you get in this position, it literally accelerates your victory. Your position accelerates your position, your victory. What position are you in now? Paul says, get in position for victory over depression. Get in position for victory over doubt, victory over discouragement, victory over a defeated mindset, victory over the devil himself. Get in position right now, right now at this moment, get in position. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and start feeling sorry for your enemy. Start feeling sorry for the enemy who is under your feet. You are an overcomer. Stand your ground in verse 14. He says, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. That's in Ephesians six fourteen. Paul is saying to the churches at Ephesus, don't you quit on me. Don't you quit on me, WLMB. Uh, WLMB. Don't you quit on me, Veers. He's saying, don't quit. The fight started 30 years ago. The fight started 10 years ago. It just started yesterday. No matter when it started, I need you to finish well. Viewer, I need you to finish well. Don't change that dial. I need you to finish well. This is God's word to you. I need you to fight against a mindset that is telling you that you're not going to make it. I need you to believe what God has started He is going to finish. He will finish. You started out well, so finish well. Now, this word here on stand, stand your ground means to stand against. He says, I'm calling you to stand against something. It means to hold at bay aggressively. Say if depression is trying to come in your house or something is trying to affect your mindset, God says, or Paul says, hold at bay. Hold at bay aggressively. Don't let anything get to your family, your kids, or your job, but you're to hold at bay aggressively. The context is a hand-to-hand combat. You know, we like to fly over, you know, in the wars, we fly over with airplanes. But the reality is in an enemy that you cannot see, there's going to be some hand to hand combat. But God says, I've equipped you to win this battle. And then finally, it means to stand ready for the next battle. I wish I could tell you that it was over in the first battle. I wish I could tell you that once you win this battle, it's over. But the reality is it won't be over. The reality is that you have to access the six pieces of God's armor on a consistent basis. When I started playing football, I used to play football on the collegiate level. I joined this team, this team called a Pop Warner League, which is a pretty prestigious league. I would ride my bike five miles to practice down at the nearest YMCA. And at the YMCA, I'd always play street football, but now I was entering to the world of organized sports. And so the coach, he took me and he tried me out for various positions. And one of the positions he tried me out was on the offense, and it was called slot back. He couldn't try me out for running back, but he had to try me out for slot back because somebody already had that position. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with football, I was the guy who ran the ball. And we had this one play that I call my play that allowed me to average about 50 yards a carry. And it was a trick play that I believe is illegal today. But I'd go to the sideline and I'd look at my coach. And as I was looking at my coach, he would give me the signal when the quarterback basically gave the signal for the snap to be counted. Now, nobody thought I was in the game because I was on the sideline, but I was still in bounds. And so what the coach would tell me when to go and I would go and I would catch the ball and the rest was history. It was 50 yards and sometimes a touchdown. 
this was my play, and I played on the offensive side. I carried the ball. But then another position that my coach tried me out for was a position called defensive end because I was kind of big and tall at the time. He tried me out for this position, and I was so great in this position because I wouldn't let anybody get by or get around the edge, and I would always do my best to sack the quarterback. But the coach said or felt that I was good enough to play offense and defense. I was good enough to carry the ball, and I was good enough to take the ball away when I should have had it. So the, what God is saying here and what Paul is saying here, you are good enough to play both ways. You're good enough to play defense and offense. You're good enough to watch, fight, and pray as someone has said. So sometime in the spiritual battle, you've got to fight both ways. But understand that you are equipped to fight both ways. Paul, in this passage, is letting us know that sometimes you'll be running with the ball and sometimes you'll have to take the ball away. But he says you've been equipped to fight both ways. God is saying to us this morning that the reason you are able to fight both ways, he's saying to us tonight or in the afternoon, he's saying to us that we are equipped with quality, not any kind of quality, but God's quality, not any kind, but the God of God's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You have been equipped with truth, righteousness, peace, salvation, faith, and the word of God. Truth, righteousness, peace, salvation, and the word of God. This means that not even the kingdom of Satan can defeat you when you're wearing God's quality. Access and use God's quality. And if the armor, if the armor can defeat the satanic kingdom, then certainly it can defeat a little doubt in your life. Certainly can defeat sickness out of your life. Certainly can defeat unforgiveness out of your life. You have the opportunity to wear God's quality. Spiritual warfare is like a 25 pound porcupine fighting against a pride of lions. I saw this illustration the other day where this porcupine was getting ready to be attacked by a pride, a pride of lions. And what the porcupine did was the porcupine basically humped up and allowed the quills to shoot up those little sticky things. Now, what I didn't know is when the porcupine would hump up like this and allow the quills to shoot out, what was happening is they would attack the feet and the face. See, when you are in a fight, you've got to go to the source. And this porcupine, believe it or not, he defeated a pride of lions because what he would do is he would back up, shake, and begin to shoot the quills. Maybe right now you're listening to me and you're just sitting there. Standing still does not mean we don't do anything anything, but it means sometimes we've got to access our weapons by humping our backs. We've got to access our weapons because what it does is when we access the weapons, it doesn't release our power, but it releases God's power. But more importantly, it releases God's quality. It is about quality, not quantity. See, you don't have to be more powerful than your enemy, but you do have to access and use the weapons that God has given you when it looks like you're not going to make it when it looks like you're outnumbered when it looks like you have no chance remember God has equipped you to fight the good fight and you cannot lose you cannot be defeated you are an overcomer what you wear when you wear God's quality these weapons of our warfare are not merely human but they are powerful through God for the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons are designed to tear down walls, not build up walls. The weapons are designed to tear down walls of racism. They're designed to tear down walls of cynicism. They are designed to tear down walls of chauvinism and charlatanism and demonism and eroticism and escapism and gangsterism. Access and use God's quality today. Let me pray with you right now. Father, I thank you right now. Let this word penetrate every heart. Let it penetrate every heart that's listening 
in this television, on this television station right now. Penetrate them to understand that they have access to use God's quality, access to use truth, access to use righteousness and peace and faith and salvation and the word of God. Go out today, go out tonight, go out this afternoon and apply God's quality in your life today. God bless you. Thank you for watching Pastor's Point today. If you would like to learn more about the church featured on today's show, feel welcome to connect with them at the following contact information. If this show has been a blessing to you, visit our feedback section on our website at wlmb.com slash Pastor's Point. You will also be able to request a DVD of today's show and find a schedule of pastors for this season's episodes. We are so grateful for your prayers and financial support that make Pastor's Point possible. Be sure to tune in next time when another local pastor shares a message from the Word of God right here on Pastor's Point.